Hi gang, Wayne McPhail for Rabble TV here. Welcome to the Center for Social Innovation at 215 Spadina Avenue in Toronto. And welcome to this vidcast called Quick Change. In Quick Change, I'm going to be interviewing some of the tenants of this space about the work they do. Now, just around the corner here and up above me are about 150 NGOs and nonprofits who are doing really interesting change work, and we're going to learn about it. But first, we're going to do an interview with Tanya Sermon, who is the executive director of the CSI. And she's going to give us a bit of the history of the place and some of the values that went into to us. So please join me for Quick Change, a podcast that's going to be coming to you over the next few months. And join me now for my interview with Tanya Sermon. We sat up on the rooftop garden that's just above here, about six floors up, and had a great chat. So see you up there. I'm Wayne McPhail for Rabble TV. Join me. Can you tell me what the CSI does? The Center for Social Innovation is a nonprofit social enterprise that provides shared space and shared services to over 150 social mission organizations in downtown Toronto. We use physical space as a way to bring folks together from a whole different wa uh, range of backgrounds. We bring arts groups together with environment groups, together with social justice, capacity builders, small business, bringing all these different folks together to provide them with basic services. Uh, but on top of those basic services like internet access, uh, workspace, um, photocopier, fax machine, kitchen, meeting room facilities, we are also programming the space and acting as a um, community centre for social innovators from across the GTA and around the world who come together to attend workshops, seminars, events um, and participate in different types of programming. Um, and on top of that, on top of the uh, sort of community centre work, we are also an incubator, um, kind of like a social venture capitalist for change that's really focused on how do we add, um, how do we engage really, really directly and um, very large way around projects that we think have real world changing potential. Right. Now you talked about the space and it's a beautiful space. Anybody who's come to it would, would agree, I think. Um, so how did it come about that such a wonderful space in downtown Toronto sort of landed in your lap? Ah, uh, yes. Um, well, I, I definitely think that, um, you know, there is no question that the way that the Center for Social Innovation came together was really a collaboration amongst a number of different people. Key amongst those was Margie Zeidler, the owner of Urban Space Property Group, who owns the building. And there's no question that Urban Space was instrumental, almost like our angel investor in, and co-creator in creating the Center for Social Innovation. Um, we also had a larger range of different folks that came together um, who brought a whole range of different expertise around social innovation, around networks, and around community. And so, in fact, it has been a um, it's been an amazing collaboration, but if it hadn't been for the work of, uh, of Margie Seidler, there's no way that it would have been, uh, it would have been possible. And who are the other investors early on? There was, I know there was the Trillium Foundation. Who else got it got involved? Well, there's sort of like a, there was a group of about five of us that came together in the early days. Um, uh, Margie Seidler, uh, myself, uh, Mary Rowe, Eric Camper, and Pat Tobin were sort of the five uh, key people who really pulled the concept together. Um, we started it in January 2004 at the idea stage, and by June 1st, uh, six months later, we had opened the doors to our first 14 organizations. Those uh, five people formed the, uh, the original team or board of directors for the Center for Social Innovation. But then we knew that we needed to get additional investment, and so um, we've, we've benefited tremendously from uh, the Ontario Trillium Foundation, who's been able to put in startup capital, the Harbinger Foundation, who was um, willing to cover operating costs in those early, uh, really difficult and challenging days. Um, and then and with our expansion, we were um, uh, lucky enough to be able to work with the Canadian Alternative Investment Cooperative and a number of other smaller funders who were able to help us to capitalize that expansion. So, you know, no project um, happens alone. Uh, you need absolutely everybody uh, working on side to get these things into reality. Now, one of the things you talked about recently was that one of the things you like about the CSI is that you get to live your values. Mm -hmm. right? So tell me what that means and how your values translate to what the CSI values are. Well, there's so many levels on which that's true. Uh, I mean, when we did our tenant survey and we asked our tenants why they liked being a, a 
part of the Centre for Social Innovation, we were looking for things that were, you know, concrete that we could go to government with and say, you know, you know, the Centre for Social Innovation has saved this many dollars or, or what have you. We learned two things that we didn't entirely expect. Um, the first thing that we learned is that our probably the number one social um, mission that we have succeeded in achieving is that we create happy, healthy workspaces for people who are making change in the world. Um, people love coming to work at the Centre for Social Innovation. It's beautiful, it's healthy, it's inspiring. They feel absolutely engaged in their community. Um, they are, they found that balance between the sort of the community space that holds them and the, um, and the productivity space, the ability to really focus on the, on the job. So, you know, number one, our social mission has been to create healthy, happy workspace for people who are making change in the world. Number two, uh, we, we've done less to save money for people because most of our tenants have come out of their own home offices or their basements. Instead, what we found is that, in fact, we've been able to create money for our tenants. And um, when uh, tenants become a part of the Centre for Social Innovation, in fact, their revenues tend to rise and their resilience uh, as organizations, the ability for them to retain key staff people increases and they're able to increase their profile and thereby attract additional funding. So it's an interesting kind of thing. When we created the Centre, we thought it was about efficiencies and effectiveness. Uh, we didn't realize it was going to be about pr uh, profile and, and about creating a healthy workspace. But those seem to be two of the, uh, the real advantages and I think um, having a beautiful space that people who are trying to change the world can work in um, is also a sort of a social innovation. Uh, some of us have you know, worked in some pretty substandard um, facilities and so uh, I think people really just like being in a, in a beautiful, inspiring location. Well, you said beautiful about four times now, and I want to come back to that because it is a beautiful space, and it didn't have to be that way, yeah. right? And I, I really want to dig in on why it is that way, and I've got a sense that you've got something to do with that, but I, I would like you to talk about that. Well, I, I mean, I think that beauty is a social change issue. Um, you know, one of the things that I learned here at the Centre for Social Innovation is I I really got an opportunity to be exposed to more creative people, more artists, and it became clear that beauty is, uh, it's just the magic which keeps people together. It's the, it's the, it's the reflection of harmony in, in some ways. And so um, I love beautiful things. And uh, Margie Zeidler, who is the owner of the building, also loves beautiful things. Um, and so beauty is in the eye of the beholder, but I think what we try to do at the center is we try to create space which reflects our values. So when you walk into the space, there's glass throughout the space, uh, which tells you that we're an open and transparent community. It's a warm and welcoming space, which tells you that we, we're here to support you and to hold you and to welcome you into the space. Um, we have areas that are uh, more for community exchange and other areas which are more around the productivity and, and getting the job done. Um, Everybody loves sunlight. It brings out the very best in people. And so we really wanted to design a space that would um, build the connections between people, that would inspire them, would make them feel whole. Um, and yeah, I, I mean, I think beauty is one of the most underrated and vitally important parts of our existence. I think that, that when we're surrounded by beauty, I think that it brings out the very best behavior in all of us. And that's certainly the direction that we want to go at the center. So I think the Center for Social Innovation is about what's possible in the world. Uh, when we're trying to curate the ultimate team of uh, folks, we're really looking to attract and be a magnetic attractor for those people who are not saying what's wrong in the world, but rather are taking a stab at creating what's right in the world. And so we're looking for people who are asking the questions, what do we agree on? What can we move on? What can we create? And what's possible? So instead of being in conflict with one another, we're really looking at how are we trying new things and solving problems that are really about the future, about what's possible, and about what we can do right now. So for me, the Center for Social Innovation is about bringing together all those people who are creators, who are builders, and who are interested in just taking a stab at making the world a better place each and every day.